This is the Striving Butterfly Podcast. Hey everybody, this is Colleen, your host for the Striving Butterfly Podcast. The Striving Butterfly is a storytelling podcast that takes you on a deep dive into my own personal journey where I sit down and reveal the ups and downs of navigating life all whilst battling trauma, disappointment, heartbreak and failure. The aim is to encourage, empower and to help you restore what you've lost or hidden due to past mistakes and events which has caused you to wear an armour and to hide your true self. Hey guys, welcome back to another episode of The Striving Butterfly. If this is your first time, welcome, welcome, welcome. If not, hey guys. So excited to have you back with me. It feels like you are joining me at the moment as we have our little roundtable discussions. Well, uh, not so physical roundtable, but... I just want to say if this is your first time and if it's not, get something nice to drink. We're going to get into it today. Yes, as I always do. <laughs> um, as you know, no stranger to me, I get right in it. And today is not going to be any different. So crank it up, get cozy, make sure you have a notepad to hand and a pen don't be too scared to pause and go back. And if you want, just listen to it again um, and make your notes. At the end of this session, there is going to be a handout because I'm going over something different today. We've been talking about vulnerability. Well, I've been talking to you guys about vulnerability. Thanks for all the comments coming back in and the questions. I see them. I hear them, I feel them, I am with you and I love the fact that you are with me too. I'm loving how vulnerable you are being with me. Many of you don't know me um, like that but just having you come out and reach out to me and sharing your own stories, it's amazing and it just shows that you are taking that step of not sitting in silence, which we love. So what are we going to talk about today? I'm staying with vulnerability, but this time, this episode, I'm going into friendships of the same sex. Now, since I've started on the podcast, I've like scraped over friendships. I've been telling you my story, but I haven't really gone into detail about any of the same sex relationships that I've had. I've sort of skated over the top of them. And that's deliberate. Deliberate because they need a whole session in themselves. That's because I've gone through a few different types of friendships. Friendships that have broken me. Friendships where I have just felt an outpouring of love, friendships that have used and abused all that I had given, friendships where I've been misjudged but fundamentally there is a a light at the end of this tunnel of friendships and I am in an absolutely beautiful place with the friendships that I have around me now. But it weren't so easy to get there. I don't know if you're the same as me, but how many of you are still talking to your primary school friend or the friend that used to knock on your door so that you could go out and play outside and run up and down the street and go to the sweetie shop? How many of you are still friends with the girls you used to hang out with in secondary school, sixth form? How many of you are still with colleagues that turned into friends, university friends and friendships and then you got friendships with your 
church sisters. Then you got friends of friends. Now, I'm 42. For a minute there, I was thinking if I'm 43. But I'm 42. Every decade of my life, I have met different people. And, you know, we meet different people along the way. Females um, on my journey. Some who have stuck with me and some who I have lost. And there's times where I still think about those friendships and why they went so sour, knowing how much fun and excitement we had at that time. Sometimes we have to realise that some people come into our life for only a season. Some people come into our life as a wake up call. And some people come in our life to just transform it for the better. What's your definition of friendship? I had a look up, because I always do a little bit of research. <laughs> I had a look up um, in the dictionary what the definition is. And there's a couple definitions, you'll be surprised. Ones that have stuck with me the most that I have pulled out is... Friendship is not a preordained or fixed identity that predetermines people's behavior. Friendship attachments provide a sense of security and a sense of belonging, which potentially counters isolation and loneliness. Friendship is a state of enduring affection, esteem, intimacy and trust between two people. In all cultures, friendships are important relationships throughout a person's lifespan. So what's your definition of friendship? Think about it, jot it down and revisit it later as it might be worth amending. I'm hoping that this triggers some of your friendships and you just note take some of what how you're feeling some friendships actually just can make you angry at the fall of the broken trust like you think about it and some friendships you're glad to have over some friendships are still ongoing and you know they're not good for you but you just don't know how to break them off out of fear of not having any other friends. And some friendships we have around us and continue to have around us and continue to feed in certain relationships because it's not really a friendship, it's more a relationship where you are held hostage out of fear that your friend may harm or do something that you feel that you will be held responsible for. Mm. Yeah. You think about it and you brush it over because we know that some friendships are just unhealthy. But, you know, if you break this off, it could go real left because you may be the only lifeline in that friendship. However, it could be absolutely draining and taking everything from you. And I say that because sometimes it can damage other friendships that you come into contact with out of the mere fact that the other friend is jealous, intimidated or just causes a wedge or doubt meaning that you can't progress with other friendships you can't move forward with other friendships because you're nervous of what going to happen to the original friend 
or the friend you knew first, <laughs> or the friend you went to school with. I've had many friendships in my lifespan to date. Some still going strong and some shattered into a million pieces. Others are deliberately on hold. And some have just separated as time has gone on. I find friendship breakups harder than breaking up with a partner. I've been asked in the past why I respond or act a certain way when a question's asked. And it can be any type of question. But it is usually a question that I might get my back up. And from seeing my reaction, there's usually a comment before I even get to answer. And it's usually, which man hurt you? What guy broke your heart? And I, the first time, I actually thought about it. The second time, I questioned it again. And then, as I really reflected on it afterwards, after the call, after the discussion, after being asked more than once, I remember answering someone else that asked me that, in fact, it hasn't been guys that has caused me to be sour. Yeah, I've, I've had some breakups and some tough ones. But it has been my female friendships that have really broken my heart, broken trust. Everything that we had built up over the years just lost. So, yeah, it's not a dude. It's actually the girls out there. And there's so many different reasons. So many different reasons. Some of the friendships that have shattered... I can tell you my version of events, but boy, I don't know what was going on in their head. All I know is that I was hurt, it was unfair, it was wrong, but I've got to a place in my life and it has taken a while to actually say and mean it, not just say it for the sake of saying, because sometimes we say things, brush them over and have an really dug into the fact that I don't believe what I'm saying but I have right now I know that the friendships that haven't worked the friendships that has shattered the friendships that I've had to put on hold or pause. Whatever the mix up, whatever set us apart, whatever moved us for us to no longer be talking, for us to no longer be mixing, etc., etc. And the list can go on. I can actually say for all that has been done, that I forgive them. That's not an easy thing to say and I'll get into it. Which is why I'm starting a little backwards. But I truly forgive them. Nothing extra to add on. And a couple of them... Three people in mind that really drop straight in my head. I have always thought, what if I see them in the street? What if I actually see them in the street? One I have seen a few years back was so blasé, I just acted like I didn't see them. Because at that time I was like, nah, don't even have the energy. 
and it wasn't even the setting where I could. And the other two, I'm just like, hmm. Would I smile? Would I stop? Would I tilt my head as if to say, Wagwan, hello. I think I would just give a dip of the head to acknowledge I see you, you see me. I don't think there is any need for me to, I don't think there's any need for me to stop them and have a chit chat or a conversation. I think in my own heart, as I'm sure in their own heart, if they have, we just know that all is forgiven and we move on. Now, when I think about it and I think about the friendships that I have now, I'm truly grateful. I don't have a lot. I don't have hardly any. <laughs> like bona fides. Bona fide brethren, I don't have tons. Um, and there's so many reasons why it is a very slim picking. It's great for your purse because... You're not always out with different people, but I do have a busy social schedule. But yeah, <laughs> it's not how it used to be. As I got into my 30s and then my 40s, I stopped trying to fit in. I stopped trying to meet everybody's needs in regards to female friendships. I stopped trying to be OTT and I just thought, you know what, be you, like, because everybody else is doing them and even if they're not, at that moment in time, you can't help them, so stop being something for someone else. I think from what I experienced as a teen, I, I was the child, I know I'm not the only one, I was the child that couldn't really play out. I used to have someone that knocked on my door and she'd try so hard <laughs> for me to come out, but it just wasn't really my parents' thing for me to play outside. So that playing outside life didn't really happen for me I didn't really have birthday parties or anything like that um I didn't really have loads of friends I was such a tomboy at primary school I wasn't a bully but I was boisterous but I didn't have many at primary school either I think I went through I just remember two primary school bona fide brethren. One I am still in contact with. One I should actually look on Facebook um, and see if I can find her. And then secondary, solid. One bona fide all the way through. Still had other friends who I kept in contact with at sixth form and onwards. But... I had one bona fide at secondary. And when I think about it, primary school, secondary, sixth form, I do not talk to any of them on a regular basis. Now, when I was doing this, I had to write, everyone's name just to remind myself of the era, the decade, the time and yeah when I mean, you think about it I've gone nearly three decades, two mainly where well, I don't talk to anyone from my 20s down 
and I mean female friendships. There's something about male friendships where they ain't hurt, holding feelings, they ain't got time for you talking behind your back. So those friendships can go on and on and on. They're not getting in your feelings about you not calling. Yeah, they might cuss you out because they haven't heard from you, but it's not like I'm not talking to you. I think I've realised as I got into my 30s that the thoughts that I had before of being a friend, I was done with, I was over with. Because before, I thought I weren't cool enough. I thought I won't really have friends because of my history. I thought people weren't really going to like me because I was over friendly with guys. I was so boisterous. I used to be questioned and I knew I used to be questioned because I was the black girl that always hanged out with the white girls. And that worked for me. I used to get called all sorts, even by family members. Was judged for who I dated. So knowing all these points, I think in the friendships of my teens and then my early before my 20s, I think I always had a little armour on. Sometimes I used to wear that armour really thin. I remember so clearly my secondary school and my sixth form. Those friendships were pinnacle. But at the end, I was so disappointed. When I started at secondary, I had one friend. We were in the same class. We used to do everything together like that whole term batty and bench that was us when it was parents Evelyn it was always the same comment yeah she's good no problems does homework on time but have to separate her because she's always laughing with always talking always exchanging letters we went to music club together. We used to hang out in the streets, go a two in, go a Streatham, go on a Brixton, go a Trucadero. Saturdays were exciting. Her mum was much more lenient than mine. So it was there was always time and space where she could come after school, hang out, and then go back home and when I could get a little room, little breathing room, I'd go to her house and hang out and weren't really restricted. And it was, when I think about it, it was so much fun. I literally would have done anything for her. Anything. Because when I went through it, with the teen pregnancy, she had my back. She was with me when I very much had the loss. She was the one that called my mum and got in contact with my mum. She was there at the hospital. She came to visit me. After school, she would bring me homework because I wasn't at school for a month. Like She was there solid. But I do remember, and I never really thought about it. I do remember a couple of times we stopped talking. Foolish reasons, foolish, foolish reasons. But we did, we stopped talking. And back then you don't really think why. You're just like, oh, mum, she's not talking to me. And your mum would say, everything will work out. You know what you two are like. You're so close. You know, these things happen. Giving me advice that it will blow over. But, you know, when you're at school and you're not talking to your friends, it is long. Literally, it's like, who am I going to sit with? Who am I going to have lunch with? Who am I going to walk around and when you're in the same form, it's like, where am I going to sit now? Because you've got to make sure you get in early enough so you can get the right 
table or chair and she was quite popular she was over popular she was way more cool than I was way more friendlier than I was everyone would just attract to her and I would sort of be on your own so when we had the fallouts very much I just went to school and came straight back home at lunch times even though you weren't allowed I'd go home have my lunch and come back just for my lessons. Literally lived only five minutes. I would walk back home and that was it. Do my homework and go to school the next day. You know, I didn't, I don't actually sit and thought about that, that there were some friendships that were just, didn't work at secondary school. So those arguments didn't continue. They just sort of diffused. We were so close that I think I apologised or I wrote her a letter. I most probably could dig the letter out. So we were really big into writing letters to each other because we would get separated 99% of the time in class because we just couldn't sit together because we was kinning too much teat. Um, We got into a flow of just writing letters to the point that people in form would just push the letters back or forward like give that to blah 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 you'd find a way to get the note and we'll just go back and forth back and forth back and forth um we talk about everything so I think when we fell out it was another girl and myself had just wrote a letter and a note and we worked things out and it sort of became back normal we did school life and we did sixth form and I think from sixth form that's when different sort of behaviors and style started to come out we were still besties but newer people started coming into sixth form and different sort of behaviors started to come out I was talking to other girls from other forms and lessons that I was in but I stayed very very loyal if you know me if we're friends we are ride or die I've got your back like I will cover you whatever it is that you need I am there you can call me I am there you need something I am there so I would have still classed her and I did still class her as my best friend but you know when you just feel like I don't think we're best friends anymore I think we're friends. I don't think we're best friends anymore. So when it was time for me to choose, what did I want to do after sixth form? I very much decided that I'm going to do something that I want to do. All of the click at the time um, all went to the same university they all got in and went to the same university. I remember going with them and checking it all out. But I decided I wanted to do the business side of fashion. And they didn't do it there. Plus, there was a part of me that just wanted to break off. There's a part of me that just wanted to go somewhere different. Originally, I wanted to leave London. That didn't happen. I stayed to be close to my mum, found something that wasn't in London, that was outside. And that's when the changes sort of increased and the distance grew larger. So as you know, as you grow up, You are exposed to different things, different people, different environments. And some people can thrive in a sense where they can be their authentic self in any environment that you place them within. They're not changing for nothing. And some people will adapt to the environment that they're in to make sure that they stay on top. So they always seem like they're leading the pack. Now, 
I could see that. And it was just a bit, hmm. I'm going to continue to watch that from afar. Because this wasn't the person that I went through secondary school with. This wasn't the person that I hid under my bed because she ran away from home. This wasn't the person we used to dance in the living room and bust two jokes to the MTV videos. This is someone that has really changed. Or maybe I've changed. Maybe I've seen her for who she actually is. And before I was holding on to her because of my situation, that she was the only one there. But maybe behaviours that I didn't see or I ignored to see had always been there. I know you're thinking, you hid her under the bed. <laughs> so when we was at secondary school, I'm whispering now, you think there's bare people around. But when we was in secondary school, I think she had a fallout with her mum. And she was like, I'm not going home. I was like, what do you mean you're not going home? I'm not going home, I'm running away. I was like, you can't run away, where are you going to go? Like, seriously, where are you going to go? And I remember her thinking of all these different scenarios of where she can go. She was super intelligent, like really intelligent. Um, and I was like, no, 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 no. Don't worry. I've got an idea. Because I don't want you out on the street. I don't want you somewhere else where it's really, really unsafe. I've got an idea. Underneath my bed, like, it's like a whole other world underneath there. There's storage, everything. I'm going to clear it out and make a bed underneath there. And you can stay underneath there. Literally, it must have been like half a foot of space underneath the bed but it was it was really really big it was like one of my little hiding places when I'm just hiding out and wanted to read a book and recreate a world so she was like okay okay and we planned it the next day she came and she said after school yeah, I'll go back to yours. And I knew my parents' routine. I knew my mum's routine down to a T. I knew what to do, how to do it. It was all figured out. All figured out. So I was like, okay, we're doing this. After school now, she comes back to my house. My dad wasn't there. The bed was already unpacked. And we're hanging out in the bedroom. And then 5.30 hit. Like, without a doubt, my mum was home at 5.30. And when we're at home, we'd have to chill together as a family. We always had dinner together. We sat around the table. If my dad wasn't home, it would be my mum, my sister and me would just sit down talking about our day, etc, etc. So, mum's back. I'm like, you can chill up here, but got to be careful. And if I'm not mistaken... I actually even showed her where all the creaks were on the steps. And even when she was underneath the bed, all the places where she got to be careful because it makes too much noise. Um, in my household, it was sort of like an open door policy as well. We didn't really close and lock up doors. Like we were very free. We were very open in the space. So I was like, at any moment, there's really no knocking it's just maybe a tap and straight in the door like you can't shut up the door and think it's okay door must be somewhat ajar and my sister for instance she's not knocking she's not even tapping she's straight in um so we planned it had dinner chilling with the family and I remember I 
got an extra play. I don't know how I did it, but I managed to get extras. And I think I said I was hungry still and blah, blah, blah. Couldn't take the plate upstairs. There's no plate and food upstairs. None of that business. That didn't work. So I just can't remember how, but I think I got it in a bag or something. Or I even might have got the plate, but like a small little saucer. Like a small little saucer that you put a teacup on. And I remember giving some excuse about, oh, I'm going to go upstairs. I've got some homework to do. I'm going to just close my door and get on with it because I really need to focus. I really need to do this. So one thing I did, I did my homework. I was good at my homework. I did my homework. So I could use that as an excuse. So now she had her food. She was upstairs. Um, She was under the bed. She was just chilling. I had a TV in my room. So underneath the bed, I would leave the door ajar and she would be watching the TV just a little bit. And then I would sit on the bed or I would sit down on the floor and really, really narrow room. So there wasn't really any space. She slept there overnight. She was there. Um, Did actually get asked by my mum. So back then, you know, mums to mum, friendships to friendships, mum had everyone's telephone number, you know? So... My mum would ba- basically ask me, who's who's the, who's the your friend? Give me their names and give me their numbers and their parents' numbers. Weren't no mobiles, landlines. So vice versa for her parents had my mum's number. And now she's contacted my mum and asked her, is so-and-so at your house? So my mum's come to ask me and I'm like no she's not my mum also said no she's not um so then it was what happened after school where did she go blah 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 and I remember the mum was distressed but she said don't worry she'll be fine we were so insensitive I'm thinking back now and I'm thinking if that was Kyla basically She did not appear home that night. So the next morning, the mum comes to my house. And she's, I'm literally talking to her outside of the window. She's in distress about her daughter. And I'm like, no, I haven't seen her. She's like, she hasn't come home. Blah, 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 blah. Don't know where she is. I'm really worried. I'm like, I don't know either. Um we're besties by the way it's like how wouldn't you know that so it was I was the first person and the last person that was going to be asked because you two are joined at the hip I was like I don't know went to school then she walked to the bus that was the last I know and now we ended up she did go to school that day I can't even I don't even know how I got her out the house definitely snuck her out we went to school went in class as normal as nothing guam mum's obviously gone there and she got called out of lesson head of year mum and her all having a meeting and big investigation happen of where was she you know health and well-being and all of that and it came out that she was with me so parents got called and I think they didn't get called straight away I had to give my version of events and it was like how did she stay at your house and your parents didn't know how how And I remember my mum, ah, she went through the roof because it was like embarrassment and how you make me lie to the mum and how you lie through the window. I was like, yeah, but she wanted to leave home and uh, I have to get my mum to give her version of events. I gave some excuse and I remember afterwards 
my mum, my sister, my dad all having a look under the bed and trying to figure out how the gyal sleep underneath there all night and how didn't we hear? I'm confused. And it was how did she go to the toilet? What did she eat? Like, just don't understand. My sister was absolutely just, I can remember her absolutely going to town. Always, it was like, you're sneaky, you're this, you're that. But that just shows you how good friends we were that I hid her for over 24 hours underneath my bed. And then we went to school. Um, But yeah, so being that close with someone to then seeing as they go to university, sixth form university, how they change is one that you look on on a sideline and be like, oh, okay, I see this. But maybe because different people, different environment, you have to adapt. You know, I went to uni and it was wild. I saw some wild, wild things. Really, really hard for me to make friends at uni. It was really hard going to a fashion university. Everyone was just different. It wasn't even fashion. It was a creative arts university. Everyone was just different. Everyone was so affluent, got the girls coming in who had their finances all paid for and daddy's given them a credit card that they can use. I think they had about £1,200 a month that they could spend on. There's me waiting from a student loan to come through and them telling me to stand to the side because they can't see it registered on their list. The person behind me and in front of me is like, yeah, paid at the time I was like, if those people are there, only but can imagine the people that my friends are meeting. The only good thing for her is that three other girls from our sixth form also went to the same uni. So they house shared, they house shared and it made it a little bit easier for them. But all the dynamics of their friendships went through the test of time because now they're living together now they're seeing different behaviors now you know going to parties dating all of that everything was being um, unraveled and exposed so as that unpacked and unpicked itself I just continued life you know I hanged out with another girl that didn't go off to university but was still quite local. So I used to hang out with her. We came really, really close in sixth form. And I really sort of got on with her. She had a a child quite young. So when we reconnected, I just felt like there was a bond between us because she was able to carry full term. She had to leave school, but she was able to carry full term and continue where I wasn't so there was a sort of we were relatable so I used to go to hers and hang out a really nice friendship can't tell you how we sort of separated couldn't tell you I don't think it was real hard feelings I think we sort of grew apart that was the time I ended up going out with someone twice my age so I weren't really hanging around as much I I sort of came off the grid so when I got into that relationship I sort of came off the grid for a hot minute a real hot minute and didn't really hang out with friends just really kept to myself because they were doing their thing I was doing my thing so if I look back at it now they most probably said I changed I was hanging out and going out with a whole load of guys and dating someone twice my age she's changed she's different you know um not as funny not as fun not always in banter doesn't want to really go out raving you know they lived at the other end of town and driving there was a myth wasn't a myth but it was just too much headache when I was in the relationship so there was a part of it that I detached myself then I got a job at Orange on Oxford Street. This is where 
life really changed. <laughs> and you'd think, how did life really change? Got a job at Orange and long story short, I met some guys through there. Really, really good guys. They came in for a phone and we were bantering and joking. And I must have been chatting to them till the end of my shift because it was on the high road. And then afterwards they were like, yeah, we're going to go Selfridges and we're hanging out. Come, 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 come. Went out, hang out with them for the whole evening, jumped on the tube, went home. I think I had work the next day and they bucked me again. They came to the work, my workplace again and they were hanging outside and they were like, oh, we're going out tonight. We're going to get dinner first. We're going Chuckadero and then we're going to get dinner down the road. Like, come, 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 come. And I was like, OK, but I can't be too late. Got to get home. And they were like, oh, we want to go out, want to go out. And it was funny because back then, again, it was just me on my ones. Um, hanging around with a group of guys, going to dinner, walking up and down Oxford Street, catching to joke, laughing. And it literally was about four guys, four guys. And I was super close with two of them, really super close with two of them, um, to the point that they met my mum. They used to pick me up, drop me home. You know, I'd get ready and then go back out with them and go driving. Real good conversations. And I still see one of them now and it's just pure love. Um, always a blessing to see them because it just reminds me of some of the fun times that we had. And I just thought to myself, I can't continue just hanging around with these mandem. <laughs> I just can't. I'm just constantly hanging around with these guys. It looks really really bad one girl tree man just doesn't work so I was like okay I got some girls I'm gonna bring my girls out and let's all hang out so I remember telling them to get ready we're gonna go we're gonna go out I think we were going Hanover Grand or somewhere or gas club might be and I can't remember it was a weekday met my girl and then was like okay at the time, these guys were driving TTs, you know, top of the range cars. So it was like, rah, we don't have to drive our car. We're going to pick you up. And I was like, he's got a TT. So we'll pick you up and we can fit in the back and then we'll go to the venue and bloody, bloody, blah, blah, blah. Now, there wasn't any real attraction between me and the guys. One of them, mm, they could have been a possibility, but. I think we friend zoned each other so quick that nothing was coming off it. So I introduced my friend now, introduced my friend and she weren't really feeling him. We must have went out. She weren't feeling the other guy either. But then I think something occurred where we then went back to one of the guy's flats. He had a flat, really, really nice flat, all done up. And that's where we used to just hang out, laugh, joke, you know. So I think we went back there and I think he showed her his life. A life through a lens of Gucci, Prada, Versace, all of that. Very fast life. And someone who wasn't attractive became attractive real quick. And what happened is she ended up in a relationship with this person. They dated and they sort of went into business together. From going into business together, uh, the dynamics of our friendships changed because hmm, I've got to be careful in some of the language which is why you can tell the dynamics of our friendship changed because she changed as a person and someone I grew up with all of a sudden became very superficial and materialistic and she forgot that it was actually me that introduced her to the guys so 
who she was trying to be and how she was trying to talk to me because she was trying to talk down to me sometimes it was like she was high and mighty I weren't in designer I weren't in the Gucci's I weren't in the Prada I weren't in the Fendi I wasn't in it I might have like just weren't in it I might have had a little one-off but real real rare where she was she was dripping she was dripping and she just thought yeah and I was watching her from afar thinking, okay, all right, I'm going to be cool because these are my people. You're still my people. So relationship continued. Uh, and she brought in another girl into the clique. Um, and she then started dating one of the guys. Another guy came into the clique. I started dating him and we were just all like a whole group, a whole posse that used to hang out, chill out the whole nine yards together. It was great. It was fun. So then we was like, oh, cool. Let's go to Florida. It's like Florida. Oh, my gosh. Yes. Amazing. I don't even know how my mum's going to let me go. My mum is not going to let me go. Um. But yeah, 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 let's do it. It was took some convincing. It took not my best friend, but another friend who became and ended up becoming my best friend convinced my mum. She literally lived down the road. Her mum had real good morals. My mum and her mum were really relatable, very respectful. So it was like, okay, I can see this. Originally, we were supposed to go for two weeks, but then I got um, informed that one of my coursework dates were being brought forward. So the date I originally was supposed to submit, I weren't going to submit that date anymore. I had to bring it forward. And this is where things turned left real quick. Because no longer could I go for two weeks. I could only go for one week. And then I shared my reasoning. I shared the fact that my mum's not going to allow me to travel on my own. So I can't go. No one apart from the other girl that convinced my mum said, you know what? I'll stay and I'll go with you and we'll go together. So one half of the group all went and the other half of the group, which was me and this girl, just travelled together. And then there was a third group that came after us. The first group had a villa and then our sort of villa was next door. Long story short, when we first arrived, they were staying in a hotel um, we traveled down to see them. We got a car and everything. We drove, we first of all got off the plane, was calling, calling, calling. No one wanted to answer the the hotel phone because mobiles weren't around then. Um, we then drove to the hotel but didn't know the door number. Um, I think we found it out in the end because we ended up calling back the UK and I think we did have mobiles or call him, get him back through to the UK to ask the boyfriend, to tell the boyfriend we're trying to get hold of the girls and also what room are they in. We got the room, um, we were calling them and I think in the end the boyfriend told her, pick up the phone, the girls are here and they're trying to get hold of you. When we called them now and we got through, there was so much friction on the phone we thought, ah, oh, maybe they're busy having so much fun, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Let's not read into it too, too much. But then we went to visit them, and it was just, mm, this is weird. They were really awkward with us. It was like they were having this great holiday with just the three of them, and all this amazing stuff is happening, and they didn't have no time for us. You know, originally we was going to stay with them, but. There was no more room for us to stay with them. And we could have stayed in the complex, but we made a decision. Actually, let's just do our own thing. Let's just do our own thing. And we were like, we'll call you tomorrow and we'll meet up. I think we called tomorrow 
they already had left, didn't get through. So we did our own excursion. We went SeaWorld. We went more sightseeing because we had a car. We drove. We had a great time. But it was just really, really weird how these girls didn't have time for us. This was my best friend and she's acting weird. I couldn't come because I had to submit my coursework. What is so wrong with that? Why is everything so bad? Like It was so confusing. So then the third group came, which was the guys and it was the guys all came along and they moved from the hotel and we moved into apartments and there were two apartments next door to each other. We were in one apartment. Originally, all the girls were going to be in one apartment and then all the guys in the next apartment. But we could feel the friction. And I remember when we got into the apartment and we were all just jamming, I remember saying to the other girl, I need to speak to my girl and ask her what is wrong because I don't understand what's wrong, why she's given me so much attitude and she's got no time to talk to me. This is like my best friend. So I tried to approach it and I got air, like, you know, I ain't got the time in a conversation, maybe later sort of approach. So I was like, rah, okay, cool. I see that. Left it. So hanging out with the guys in the the apartments were fairly big, hanging out with the guys, talking, um, catching joke, banter. And we're like, okay, where's everyone staying? And in the end, we was like, okay, we're going to go and stay over there in the other apartment and we'll leave you guys in this apartment. And we sort of split off into twos. Now, holiday still got on in. But you could feel friction. The boyfriend of my best friend was like, no, 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 she's cool, she's good, there's nothing wrong. The others were like, there's something definitely wrong because she's just acting different. Like, and I'm just like, I'm not going to be on a trip and there be friction and I be the one to cause that friction. I need to know what's going on. So I approached it again and I was like, can we have a conversation outside? And I kid you not. She moved to me. Like, you want to go? So I grabbed her hand and I said, are you crazy? I have known you for 12 years. Do you really think I am going to fight you? Like, really? Like, are you out of your mind? And she had lots of mouth. Remember, she was intelligent. She had lots of mouth. Remember, she's all big and boostful now, you know. I'm like, do you really think I'm going to fight you after 12 years of friendship? Like, it's better that we just go our own way. Now, when she's sort of going, the guys were like, nope, this is not happening. And they interjected, like, the guy, the first, first guy that I had met, he interjected and was like, nope. And then he brought someone and he jumped in and she literally took her shoe off and clarted him so right there and then the holiday was divided they did their thing we did ours but as you know we came back to the UK no one's chatting well I'm still chatting to the guys and my partner and the girl that we went together but there's a massive divide arguing, passa passa, all of that stuff. And other people got caught in the crossfire. So there was another girl that we were friends with, but because of how the split happened, she had to go to one side. So now we've gone on about our business back in the UK, gone into work, hanging out with our boyfriends when we can. We go comedy club on a Sunday, but you know, before we would always be chilling at our our friend's house. Now we can't chill there because none of us get on with his girlfriend. Um, the girlfriend who 
I brought into the picture the girlfriend that was one of the last who was never really interested in him now has caused a massive wedge so it was very heartbreaking in a sense where I don't even know what I had done to you for you to go on like that to want to fight me like what did I miss and to this day I don't know but we move and I tell you things got worse things got so much worse because we ended up actually having a fight This brings us to the end of episode five, part one of Keeping It Real, Vulnerability in Friendships. Let's head over into part two, where I'll go deeper into my story of female friendships, tough decisions I've had to make, traits of a toxic friendship, and where I am now. Are you ready? See you in part two.